uh, fear is not wrong, but these phobias can really, uh, in, they can just shut us down. I mean, if we're afraid of death, then you don't live because you're so worried about dying. If you're afraid of losing control, people want you to die because you're so bent on controlling everything out of that fear of losing control. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi, Steve Arterburn here. Thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the anxiety disorder. More people report this. I gave the statistic the other day, about 19% have some kind of anxiety problem. And it is very frustrating to have it. And what's so amazing is that for some of these issues, there is a treatment, a medication, that when you take it, it adjusts things so quickly, you can't believe you've been without it for so long. And then others can be repaired with some pretty standard treatment. But first of all, we could talk about uh, what's called a general anxiety disorder. And, and there is, you would just have to say you're more prone to anxiety than other people. You're restless, you're on edge, you're irritable. It's kind of like you're on guard the whole time and, and you're worrying and it's hard to concentrate. Now you can't really say there's anything in particular or specific that is the focus of this, but it just overall it happens and your muscles are tight and you're just ready kind of for battle or to defend yourself at any time. And that's a very tough uh, thing to experience. Now here are folks that have this, that they don't have a specific source that they would say uh, that needs treatment and they find an anti-anxiety medicine, not a tranquilizer, uh, that doesn't work, but uh, it's something that adjusts the wiring or the brain chemistry. And pretty soon, uh, this thing that was so debilitating, it doesn't affect you anymore. Now, the, the other thing is that we would call obsessive compulsive disorder. And the obsessive uh, thing is, you know, you just, you get obsessed with um, different types of fears or uh, questioning and uh, you, like you're you're kind of obsessed with cleanliness or dirt or or whatever um, and and you're you're always going to have some kind of resulting compulsive behavior but underneath it there's usually a pretty tough emotion that needs to be dealt with I'll make it really simple if I feel dirty because someone sexually abused me well, then I may become obsessed with cleanliness and I could become a compulsive showering addict. When I worked in psych hospital, some people would come in, their skin was red and peeling because they took 20 showers a day trying to get free of all of the germs and the bacteria and they, they could never do it. So underneath uh, every obsession, I believe is an unresolved feeling or a trauma that's led to the obsession. And then there's this action that simply has to be performed. And, and there's some folks that have obsessive compulsive disorder that the anti-anxiety medicine pretty quickly, it is better. Uh, panic disorder. That's where a person, you know, thinks they've got everything under control, but all of a sudden impending doom, uh, terror sets in and you think you're going to die. And I remember uh, having this experience before I moved to California. And when you get through it, you just can't believe uh, the extreme reaction you had. This doesn't make any sense. But in my case, it was something that helped me survive because I realized I was so uh, afraid and so in denial about moving. The panic attack woke me up. Phobias. This is where we have fears, unrealistic fears, or, or um, augmented fears of different things. Fear of spiders, whatever. Uh, fear is not wrong, but these phobias can really, uh, in, they can just shut us down. I mean, if we're afraid of death, then you don't live because you're so worried about dying. If you're afraid of losing control, 
People want you to die because you're so bent on controlling everything out of that fear of losing control. And, and sometimes people with phobias, they're afraid to even get out of the house. And of course, that's called agoraphobia, where, you know, you just want your life to be safe and you continue to shut in and lower the uh, boundaries and borders. And then finally, maybe someday you're just stuck in your bedroom and can't get out. And there's no hope. Finally, uh, social anxiety. Whenever I'm with other people, I'm anxious, I'm uneasy, uh, I'm drained by the experience. Uh, I just am, am not one to um, connect with folks very much. I'm being afraid of being judged or I feel inferior to them. Uh, and so all these things cause me to hate being with other people and then loving my time alone. But that time alone can really destroy us emotionally. If you've struggled with some of these, we could help you at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I don't know of anybody that's ever just on their own resolved some kind of mental health issue in isolation. Everybody needs to be able to reach out to somebody and share. And boy, does it ever take the power out of the most powerful problems when we finally are strong enough, courageous enough to share with somebody else. And you can call us and you can share whatever it is you're going through with a wonderful counselor at New Life. So give us a call. See you next time. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.